Hey everyone, I hope you're doing great. So a few days ago I was tinkering and customizing my Linux Mint system. So I decided to share some tips and tricks on customizing Cinnamon with you. I will show you some things I like to do. But what I really want to do is show you ways to customize your desktop user experience in any way you want. There are six main ways to change how Cinnamon looks and acts. Themes, effects, applets, and panel customization, desklets, extensions, and actions, and we will go through all of them now. So relax, get comfy, and let's make our mint awesome. Since I mentioned Cinnamon, for those who don't know, Cinnamon is a desktop environment that the main version of Linux Mint uses. Other desktop environments that Mint uses are Mate and XFC. Here, I will focus on Cinnamon. So for starters, let's change our desktop background, and then we can go to themes. To do that, we need to right-click on an empty space on our desktop and then change the desktop background. There we get to this little window and here we have two options either to use a single image desktop or to change images in a time interval like a slideshow. To change that we go to the settings tab and if we want a single image we turn off a slideshow option and if we want a slideshow we just leave it on. Under there we see some options to customize things further but I usually leave them as default it works well enough. The delay interval is a big one, as it changes how often your background changes in a slideshow mode. So let's go back to the images tab. Here on the left side we can see all collections of images we have. By default you have these that are built in, but using the plus button you can add any folder with images that you want to use for your background or a slideshow. In a slideshow mode all images in a folder will form a slideshow automatically. I have one folder with images prepared for this so let's add it. Just click the plus, find it, and select it and click open. Not that hard, right? And now we have our custom backgrounds. Okay, let's go to themes now. Let's find it. Just search for themes on the menu. And that gets us to this menu where we can do a few one-click changes and a lot of customizations. First we have style and that's just the theme you will use. There are a few options. Default is Mint Y. That's the most modern one and the one Linux Mint recommends. Under that we can select appearance that allows us to choose if we want a dark, light, or mix of dark and light theme variants. I prefer dark so I will stay on it for now. Third option is color that allows us to set icon and accent colors. As you can see most colors look good, but my favorite is green, so I will use that one for now. Now let's check out other styles it offers here. So we have Mint L, that's the older version of Mint Y. They left it because some people still prefer it. Appearance and color for it work the same as you can see. Mint X is an older style and it doesn't have dark colors, but everything else works the same as you can see. There's also high contrast in Edwita. But let's keep moving because we have a lot more to cover in this video. Let's go back to Mint Y Dark for now. This is often enough to get the basic look and feel you want out of your system. But I want to show you how to get into even more detail and really get it to your liking. So for that we need to go into advanced settings. Here we have a list of a few things we can change. First is mouse pointer. And here, well, we can change mouse pointers. You can download and install many different mouse pointers with apt or from the software center. Next one is applications here. Things get a bit more advanced. This is just a part of the theme that affects your application window but not your panel and all that. This allows us to use one theme for the application window and other for the rest of the system. We have many to choose from most Mint X, Y, and L variants. This is also the same set of options the simplified menu pulls from. Next on the list is icons. Here we can pick any icon set we want. As you can see, most icon sets are based on Mint theme variants again, but you can of course install others, same as mouse pointers. But icons offered here and plenty for most people. And last one on our list is desktop. This is the other part of the application theme. So everything that's not covered by application settings is covered by desktop settings. This allows us to mix and match themes, but also use the same one for all parts. So we can mix and match if we select one theme for applications, and another for the desktop. But if we select the same theme for both, so let me just change the desktop one, then we have a singular theme all around. But we can go even further. You are not limited to the themes that Mint provides. You can write your own or more likely, download ones others have made. There is a huge number of themes you can download for Mint. So if we go to the add and remove button we can see a bunch of them 
we can download. We can sort them by a few criteria, as you can see. But the default and probably best one is popularity. It lets you see what other Mint users are downloading and using. So let's install the three most popular themes and check them out. To do that, we just need to click on this little download button here. It takes just a bit to download, themes are really small. They are just a few text files in most cases. Now that we have them downloaded, we just go back to the themes tab to set them up. Here a theme can be in one, some, or all segments. Not all themes are full. Some change just the desktop, for example. So first theme I downloaded was Adapt and Octo. So let's try that one. Okay, found it under Applications. Nothing new under Icons, and we have an option for it under Desktop. Let's also change icons to something that better fits now. Let's try these icons. No, okay. This looks good. Okay, next one I want to try is C Black. Okay, it has an option under Applications. Good. Nothing under Icons, but again we have an option for it under Desktop. Okay, this looks good. Let's combine it with some really dark icons set. Okay, yeah, this looks good. And now let's try the last one I downloaded. It's called New Minty, so let's find it. As you can see, we don't have anything for it under Applications. Also, nothing under Folders, so this is just the desktop theme. And yeah, this is how it looks like. And now we are in that mix and match situation. We have Babita Mouse C Black Application Theme, Yaru Icons, and New Minty Desktop Theme. As you can see, this way you can combine bunch of things and get something unique and cool. I like the best Nocto, so I will set that up and also change icons so they match. Okay, that's it for theming. So, next is just one small thing I want to touch upon, and that's effects. This changes how windows act when you close them, open them, or minimize, maximize them. Just go to the menu and type effects. Few versions ago, this had a lot more options, but when they had a big code rewrite, they left out most of them. I like the older version with more options for sure, but right now, all we can pick are these few options and you can change them around to see what is the best fit for you. I like to use the fly animation for closing windows, so it looks like they are falling of the screen, see? Our next stop is panels, how to customize them, move them, and add applets to them. We have lots to talk about here. First thing we should do is right click on a panel and then panel settings. Here we get, can you believe it? Settings for our panel. The first setting is really cool, it allows us to auto hide the panel, so it doesn't take up screen space. The default is always show panel, Auto hide hides it whenever there isn't a mouse pointer on it. But Intelligent is a really cool option that I personally like. It shows the panel when there are no maximized windows or a window over it, but hides it when that space gets taken up by a window. So you get the best of both worlds. The panel keeps out of the way when you need that screen real estate, but shows up when there is enough space. Of course, when we're in Intelligent hide mode, the panel also shows up when there's a mouse over it. I will keep it on auto hide mode for the rest of the video. Under it, we can set hide and show delays. I don't want any delay, but if you do, you can set that up here. Next is custom panel size. Well, this lets you change the size of your panel. You can make it really small or really big. I prefer my panel to be big, and since it's auto hiding, it's not really taking any screen space when I need it. To really understand the next section, we need to go into Panel Edit Mode. Do that just by right-clicking on the panel and clicking on Panel Edit Mode. In Panel Edit Mode, we can see left, right, and middle sections of the panel. Each of them can contain their own applets and icon sets. Applets are little widgets or apps you have on your panel. Right now, they're concentrated at the far right of the panel. You can move anything on the panel into any other zone of it. For example, we can move our menu button to the center zone from the left one. We just need to click and drag, and now our panel menu is in the center of the screen. Or we can put it back and put our icons on the middle. We can even put the clock from the far right side to the middle, and our apps on the right side of the panel. As you can see, we have three zones, and we can move whatever we want across them. I'll keep them in their default order because that's what I'm used to. Now we can turn off panel edit mode, and go back to our settings. As you can see here in this section, we have settings for font sizes and styles of all three zones separately, so we can really get the look we want from our panel. I just leave this to default, but feel free to play around with it. And in the last section, we have a button to add a whole new panel. Yes, you can have multiple panels. You can even have four of them all over the screen if you want. And then you have options for all your panels, 
and you can get to them using next and previous panel buttons here. But I don't need this insane amount of panels all over the place, so I will remove them. You can do that by right clicking on a panel you want to remove and then clicking the remove button and confirming. Next cool thing I want to show you is moving the panel. You can move your panel in any of the four positions we just used. Just right click the panel and then click the move button and well move it like this. It can go to either side or the top. I'll leave it in the top position for now. Now that we are done with our panel settings, it's time for applets. Applets are small programs that do things on your panel. From clock to this little part that shows active apps, it's all applets and cinnamon. You can add them, remove them, and install new ones. And just like themes, there are lots of them made by the community and uploaded for us to download and use. To get to applets, we need to right click on the panel and then click applets. Big surprise there. From here, we have two tabs, manage and download. Under the manage tab, we can see the applets that are already installed and add or remove them, or go to their settings. In the download tab, we can download apps made by others. So let's start with the Manage tab. All apps that have a check mark on the left side are active. Those without it are not. To add an applet, we need to select it and then click on the little plus here. To remove it, we need to select an active applet and then click on this minus here. To delete it forever, just click this X here. So for example, let's remove the calendar applet that's our clock and calendar right there on the panel. And as you can see, it's gone. Now let's put it back by clicking the plus button. And it's back, but in a wrong place. This will happen a lot when you add applets because Cinnamon just doesn't know where you want them. So once they are added, we can set and move them on the panel using the edit mode as I have shown you. And now it's back where it needs to be. Some applets have this gear button, and that means they have some custom settings. Let's take a look at what we can change in our calendar applet. Every applet with this button has some settings like this. One interesting thing here is the custom date format. We can use that to change how our clock looks like. There are special syntax that dictate how time is shown, and you can get it by clicking here and then just setting it however you want. Just be careful not to mess it up. So now let's download and add some applets. Let's go to the download tab. Let it refresh for a second if this is your first time opening it. It can take a bit, but after that, it's pretty fast. As you can see, there are lots of applets you can use. Some of them work, some are outdated and crash on current versions of Cinnamon, so it takes some trial and error, but most of the popular ones work. They have the same sorting as themes and show what's popular. What I like to add is the multi-core system monitor because it shows me how hard my CPU is working per core. I also like the places center because it allows me fast access to some folders I use a lot. And I also use the drawer because it can hide ones I don't want to see all the time. Let's add them now. Select and then click on the plus button. Okay, now let's set them up a bit. So enter panel edit mode. Move them around a bit. I want my places center to be right next to my clock. And because the drawer applet hides everything in its group to the left of it, I need to put all applets I want to see to its right. Great, now it's exactly how I like it. Now let's change a few settings of our multi-core applet. What's interesting is that some applets don't show the settings cog even though they should, like this one. So I need to go right click preferences to get to its settings. And here I will change just a few obvious settings to make it look better to me. Again, you do you. As for places center, it allows us to quickly go to some of our most used folders. It also has settings you can change. The most important ones are this one for setting a custom icon for it, and this one for adding custom folders to the list. Again, there are lots more applets, and it would take way too long to go through all of them. But now that you know where to find them and how to use them, you can experiment and find ones you like. Okay, so now we will move on to desklets. Desklets are like desktop gadgets that were popular back on Windows Vista and 7. They are also kind of similar to Android widgets. They allow you to have all different kinds of live data on your desktop, and a few other things. So to find desklets, we need to go to the panel menu and type desklets. Here it's the same story as with applets. You have one tab for activating and removing them, one for downloading new ones, and one extra tab for general settings. The buttons here are the same as with applets. So let's try the clock desklet. That's a default one, and here it is. We can move it around, put it where we want, and all that. To resize it, we need to go to its settings. Again, it's this cogs button, as with applets. We can also set a custom color for the numbers. Let's use custom colors to make it the same color as our icons. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, 
Let's go to downloads and see what we can download and add to our system. As you can see, there are many options for us to download, but let's download the system monitor graph, timelet, and calendar. OK, now we go back to the Manage tab. Let's remove our clock desklet because we have a better one now. And now let's add all three of them to our desktop using the plus button. And now let me just change their colors, sizes, and positions real quick. Most options are really obvious. You just find them in the list and click on the cogs icon. And then you see what you can change, like I am doing right here. As you can see, when you use a custom color once it remembers it, so it's a lot easier next time to use it. And this is about it. I think it looks good. Again, you can tinker with this a lot until you find that perfect one that feels perfect to you. I am just showing you the tools to do it. Now we will move on to extensions. Cinnamon extensions are a bit more complex. They add or extend the abilities of Cinnamon. Things like new features or animations. To find them, just type extensions and click on them. Again, we have the same thing as before manage and download tabs. And again, when you click on the download tab for the first time, you need a bit of time for it to refresh the list of extensions. And as you probably noticed, there are no default extensions. One big problem with extensions is that they hook deep into Cinnamon API and functions. And that means if they are outdated, they can make things unstable. So when you tinker with them, Expect that some problems can happen, and unfortunately, many of them are outdated. One I really like and always install is Gtile, so let's set it up. First, we download it, and then we add it to our system with a little plus button. Now let me open a few folders to show you what it does. It's not as obvious as the ones we did before. Now when we press Windows Keys G combination, we get this little grid menu and it allows us to put our windows wherever we want. It's a really easy and cool way to quickly put a bunch of open windows on your screen, exactly how you need them. Another cool extension is Wobbly Windows Effects, but it doesn't work on all systems. For example, it doesn't work in virtual machines, so I can't show you that one. Another cool one is Transparent Panels, and well, it makes your panel transparent as you can see. But I don't like how that one looks, so I won't keep it. Again, tinker with this, and see what you like best. Just know that you can run into bugs if you add an outdated extension to your Mint. And finally, last thing on our list is Actions. To find Action Settings, just type Actions and click on them. Again, we have the same Manage and Download windows. Actions are a new addition to Mint Cinnamon, and they are options that show up when we right-click on something. They are context-aware, so they should only show up when it makes sense. As we can see, here are all of the default ones. And again, there are custom ones we can download. So let's go to the download tab and wait for it to refresh. Even though it's a new feature, there are already a good amount of options to download. One I like is Calculate SHOT156, which is a really easy way to compare two files if you are not sure if they are totally the same. So let's add it. First, download on the Downloads tab, then add on the Manage tab. And now we can right click on anything and calculate it. SHAT 156 sum. SHAT 156 is a unique number that can be calculated for any file. So it's a good way of checking if a file was modified, for example. And as you can see now, we can do that really easily. And that's all I had to show you in this video. I hope it helped you, and that I have given you the tools you need to customize your minute the way you want. If you like the content I make, please subscribe. There is more coming. Also, you can check out my other videos, and if this video helped you, give it a like. Thanks for watching and have fun tinkering with your computer.